In this video, I'm going to show you how to compare two or more data sets using common graphical displays. Specifically, we're going to learn how to compare data sets using dot plots, stem plots, box plots, and bar charts. First, let's talk about how to compare data sets of quantitative variables. Specifically, what do we look at? When you compare quantitative variables from two or more data sets, focus on four features. Center, spread, shape, and unusual features. The center of the distribution is the point where about half of the observations are on either side. That is, the median of the data set. Spread refers to the variability of the data set, which is usually measured by the range or interquartile range. The shape of a data set is described by attributes like symmetry, skewness, and number of peaks. And finally, unusual features refer to things like gaps, clusters, and outliers. The bulk of this lesson shows how to interpret different kinds of charts in terms of these four features. Let's begin with dot plots. When dot plots are used to compare data sets, they are positioned one above the other using the same scale of measurement. These dot plots compare pet ownership on two city blocks, which we'll call block A and block B. Each dot represents a family that lives on the block. To compare pet owners on block A, with pet owners on block B, we would focus on four attributes, center, spread, shape, and unusual features. We see immediately that pet ownership is greater on block A than on block B. Median pet ownership on block A is two and a half pets versus one pet on block B. The range of pet ownership is the same on both blocks, but the shape of the data set is very different. Block A is bell-shaped and block B is skewed right. Neither data set has unusual features like gaps or outliers. Back-to-back -back stem plots are another graphic option for comparing quantitative variables from two data sets. The center of a back-to-back -back stem plot consists of a column of stems with a vertical line on each side. Leaves representing one data set extend from the right and leaves representing the other data set extend from the left. This back-to-back -back stem plot shows the amount of cash carried by a random sample of teenage boys and girls. If you were asked to interpret this chart on a test, you would want to compare the boy data with the girl data based on the same four factors that we have used previously, center, spread, shape, and unusual features. For example, the median of the boy data set is $42, which is shown in red on the boy side of the stem plot. And the median of the girl data set is $36, which is shown in red on the girl side of the stem plot. So, based on this display, 
we would conclude that boys tend to carry more cash than girls. With respect to variation, there is more spread among boys. The amount of cash carried by boys ranges from $7 to $73, a range of 73 minus 7 or $66. The, the amount of cash carried by girls ranges from $11 to $54, a range of 54 minus 11, or $43. With respect to shape, both data sets are roughly bell-shaped, and neither data set has gaps or outliers, so there are no unusual features. Parallel box plots are another way to compare quantitative variables from two data sets. With parallel box plots, two data sets are displayed one above the other using the same horizontal axis. Here, parallel box plots summarize results from a medical study. The treatment group received an experimental drug to relieve cold symptoms and the control group received a placebo. The horizontal axis shows the number of days each group continued to report symptoms. To interpret a parallel box plot, we again look at four factors, center, spread, shape, and unusual features. First, let's note that the treatment group has an unusual feature, an outlier representing a patient who continued to report symptoms 19 days after treatment began. The control group had no unusual features. Recall that the median of a box plot is represented by the vertical line within the box. This tells us that the median of the treatment group is around 4 and the median of the control group is around 12. Since the median recovery time was about 8 days quicker for the treatment group than for the control group, we might conclude that the experimental drug is effective. With a box plot, we have two ways to measure spread. We can look at the range or the interquartile range. In this example, we'll use the interquartile range. Recall that the interquartile range is equal to the distance between the right and left sides of the box. For the treatment group, the interquartile range is equal to about 10 minus 2 or 8. For the control group, it is equal to about 14 minus 6, which is also 8. And finally, let's consider the shape of the data set. In the treatment group, observations are concentrated on the left side of the graph, which indicates that the treatment data set is skewed right. In the control group, observations are concentrated on the right side, which means that the control group is skewed left. And finally, let's talk about using bar charts to compare data from multiple data sets. A double bar chart is similar to a regular bar chart, except that it provides two pieces of information for each category. Often the chart is color-coded with different colored bar representing different data sets. Here the double bar chart shows customer satisfaction ratings for different cars broken out by gender. The yellow columns represent men, the red columns represent women. If you were asked to interpret this chart, you might observe that men seem to prefer American cars and women Japanese cars. Also, men tend to be tougher raters. They gave lower ratings to each car than the women gave. The notion of a double bar chart can be extended to include any number of groups. For example, here we show a triple bar chart that compares satisfaction ratings from men, 
women, and children. Let's review. In this lesson, you learned how to use charts and graphs to compare data from two or more groups. An important takeaway from this lesson is to focus on four factors when you compare quantitative variables from different groups. Look at the center of each data set, which is represented by the median. Compare the spread of the data set as measured by the range or interquartile range. Note the shape of each data set. Is it symmetric? Is it skewed? Does it have one or more peaks? Also, look for unusual features, gaps, outliers, or clusters. And finally, we noticed that simple bar charts can be extended to compare two or more groups across two or more categories. Typically, each group is represented by a different colored bar, and categories are labeled on the X or Y axes. This double bar chart shows results for group 1 in yellow and group 2 in red. Results are displayed separately for categories A, B, C, and D. Thank you.